In this video, I'm going to show you how to build out this part of the page, which is what I'll be referring to as the hero section. Probably I won't add these circles in until a second video, but we will build out this entire thing as a component. The reason this will be a component is because it is reused. So you can see right here, this is kind of the main page and it's used here with this text up here. But I also reuse this on the waitlist confirmed page. And this page is just going to be the page that you're redirected to after you actually sign up. So you can see it's essentially the exact same component. The only difference is the text. So this is where we're at right now on the app. It just has an H1 and nothing else. So let's go ahead in the code here, create a new folder in the SRC, and this will be called components. And then within here, we can create a new file called the hero dot js so when we create a new component we're going to need to import react and component from react then we can create a new class and call it the hero and this is going to extend from the component and now this needs to render something we're just going to return a div right now a component always needs to return just one element so that you can use this open and close brace to make sure you always just have one element uh, you could also just make sure your top element is containing everything else within it. But I typically like to use this. Now we can create a div and we can go back into our index and basically take this H1 and just place it in here for now and then save this. Now we also need to make sure we export this component. So at the bottom, we'll export the hero component here. And now we can go back into our index and instead of having this here, we can just call our component, which is the hero. And we will need to import this. If we rerun our app, everything looks the same, although we are now calling this hero code from the component, but we are still hard coding this. So we want to actually change this to use props. We're going to actually have two props, the title and the subtitle within our component, add these two props for title and subtitle. And then this one here is going to be the title. And the subtitle right now, we can put in a P tag. So back in the index, we can go ahead and define what the title and subtitle are for our home page, which the title will just be this text and the subtitle this text. So now if we save this, you'll see we have our title and subtitle here. So it looks good. We're able to pass these variables into our component and that will make this entire thing reusable. Now we need to obviously style this. So the first thing we can do is get that green background here, which if you're noticing is gonna come down about 60% of the screen. And to do this, we're going to create this div as a container. We are going to be writing some custom CSS. So let's create a new CSS file, and this will be specific to our component. So it's gonna be called the hero module scss and now we can import that css as styles the first thing we can define is a hero container and this is just going to be displayed inline block and have a minimum height of 100 vertical height so vertical height here is just going to be the height of the screen or the height of the browser rather so this from top to bottom here is going to be 100 vh we can now add this id to this main div that we have here and then using the styles here and then calling the id on styles so if you save that not much is going to change but now we can create another div in here and it will be for that headline background so it'll be that green area so we'll just copy this and this one we're going to wrap everything in and this one we will call the headline And back over here, we can define this as well. This one, we're going to give a position of relative of width of 100 vertical width. So also that's essentially 100%. Now we're going to give this also a background of the custom green that I'm using as well as a radial gradient. So if you do look at this, there's a slight gradient here. It's a little bit lighter in the middle and it goes out to be a little darker on the outsides. This is the code that you can use to make that. A link down below, there's a gradient builder you can use to generate gradients like this. And lastly, we need to give this a height, which we'll set to 70 vertical height right now. So if we save this, you'll see we do now have our 70% here, but it is centered. And the reason this is centered is because it's being called within our main here on the home page. And the styles.main is set up in the home module CSS with this main 
class right here, and you can see it is display flex and flex column aligned center. So this aligned center is center aligning this. We're going to update this code here to actually use position relative with a width of 100% the width and a minimum height of 100. And now if we save that, you'll see it does line this up how we would want. So you can see if we click between the two, the green background is correct. Let's update the text so that it is positioned where we want it to be. So back in the hero here, we're going to wrap another div around the title and the subtitle. And this div is going to have the bootstrap class of text center and text light. Text light is going to make the text white. The H1, we're going to give some X padding of three, and this will help on mobile later. And then we also want some padding bottom of three as well. These again are bootstrap classes. So if we look at this now, you can see we have the title and the subtitle, but we want the subtitle to be a little bit tighter, um, meaning we don't want it to just be on one line. So we can modify this by actually wrapping the subtitle in a row and a column, and then making the column only take up half the screen when it's on a medium or larger device. So that looks good. And you can see if you go smaller, it will take up the whole width of the screen. We need some padding up at the top here. We're gonna go back into our custom CSS and modify it here because Bootstrap isn't going to give us exactly what we need with that. So we're going to be updating the H1. And since we are in this hero headline here, this is only gonna affect the H1, which is within this component. However, it is also the only H1 on the screen. So we can add a padding top of one and then also increase the font size to four. We also want to make the font weight a little bit bolder. So that will be the font weight 600. And if you look at that now, it now matches our final version here, which looks good. So the text is set up now. The next thing we can do is add these lines back here. And you can see there's six lines with slightly different colors and thicknesses. I'm not gonna go 100% into the code for this because I feel like it's probably pretty niche and maybe you don't actually want these on yours, but I'm going to just go ahead and add it in and then I'll quickly go over how it works. And if you want to use this yourself, you can always check out the GitHub link down below and add those lines in for yourself. All this code and the images will be available on GitHub as well, but I am going to add all of my images to this public folder by creating a new folder called images. And then for me, I have it broken up into a couple folders here, one for the icons, which simply have the icons that are used in the use cases. And then also I have these node circles here, which are used in the background. And then lastly, I have the seven versions of the phone screen, which are used throughout. So I drop those into images and then they could be used anywhere in the app. All right, so here we go. The lines are now set up. Real quickly, I'll cover a couple things. First, I created this variable in the SAS file here to keep track of the section height, because we want to use the height of this green section here to be the height of these lines. And then there's just a bit of CSS here. I have the six lines, each with their own class of vertical line, V line, one through six. And then you can see we do use that height variable here, which is the same as the height in our hero headline. And then we just simply give it a default width of one, but depending on which line it is, the width is going to change. So some of them are one pixel, some are two pixels, and some are three pixels. And then similarly, the color is a little bit different for each of the lines. This looks better because of that gradient if all the lines were the same color. So for instance, if we made them all this color, kind of commented all this out, you'll see it doesn't look as good because these are really dark here. These are really, light out here so that's why they're slightly different colors and then since the position is absolute this right here is determining the actual position of them on the page then these nodes are going to be the two circle dots here and those are also just positioned absolute it also won't have all the lines on the smallest screen so you can see there's really only three lines here and this is because in the actual html there are a couple of these that are getting hidden when it is a smaller screen. That's about it. In the HTML here, obviously we have each of the lines coming up as a span here. And then we also have the two images, which are going to be the circles that are here and here. That gets us this looking good. And the really the last thing for this component is going to be the three images. So let's go ahead and add those. As I already mentioned, all the images are going to be 
in my phones folder here within images. So starting with the HTML, I'm going to just drop this in and then explain it because it is pretty simple. Right below the subtitle here, we're going to add the three images inside of their own div. And this div is going to have a class of cover image container. And then you can see its content will be centered on the screen. Talking a little bit about this image component here, we do have just the source of all three of these, which is again, that image within our file system here. The alt tag, which is just a description of the image. And then the height and the width, which I notice are the same for the two on the outside. And then the one in the middle is a little bit bigger. All of these images that I have are at an aspect ratio of two to one. So they do have a little bit of space around them, but you'll notice that these are keeping the aspect ratio because the height is always going to be two times the size of the width. And lastly, we have a class here with phone shadow and a little bit of margin. Let's go ahead and create this class and then we'll create the phone shadow class. So cover images container is defined in the styles here, which means it is defined in this module. So we can go ahead in the hero headline and we'll actually do this above the lines and we're just going to define this this is a pretty simple class all it is actually going to do is add some padding so we can go ahead and save that lastly we have that other class which is the phone shadow and you'll notice that this class is not defined with the styles and that's because this phone shadow is going to be used throughout the page so not only is it in this component up here but it's also going to be used on all the other phones throughout the app. So we don't want to have to redefine the shadow. And again, all this is going to do is put this shadow out around here. We can go ahead and save this without the shadow and you can see what it will look like. The shadow gives it quite a bit more depth and kind of just makes these images pop a little bit more. It's definitely a subtle thing and you kind of don't really realize it until you are clicking between them. We can add this shadow pretty quickly, but we're going to do this on the globals CSS again so that we can use it everywhere within the app. And it's a simple class. All it's going to do is add a filter of a drop shadow. So these variables within here are the X offset, the Y offset, the blur radius, and then the color. So you can play around with these values within your own app to get your shadow exactly how you want. But you'll see now we have the drop shadow here and it looks now exactly like our final product. Again, we didn't add these circles yet because that is not going to be part of this component. It's instead going to be part of the homepage background overlay. So we'll do that in another video. And to do the final demonstration that this works with the second component, we can create another page for our waitlist confirmed real quickly. And we'll do this under a new file, and this will just be waitlistconfirmed.js. And I'll just paste in this code here. And it's pretty simple. We just have a override to the title. And then we have our hero section, which we just defined, although we have different text and subtext. And we also added a little bit of a margin spacing on the bottom. So if we save this and now go back to our app here, we have this route. And then now that we created this file, and since we named this waitlist confirmed in our pages directory here, then that means it will be accessible at that route. So if we go ahead and navigate to that, you'll see we get the other version of this component, which is being used. And this is great because it saves us from rewriting a bunch of code and also allows us to update things if we wanted. For instance, if you wanted to have this dot up here or something, you can easily do that once on our component and then it would be updated on both the home page and our waitlist confirm page. So we definitely covered quite a bit in this video. We got a custom component built, added some images to our app, changed our font sizes, used a good bit of custom CSS and created an additional page route. So if you're interested in building out the rest of this page, which you can see the live version at rhodesaudio.com, then subscribe and follow along and check out the playlist, which has all of the landing page content. All right. See you in the next one.